on the Sabbath day, when we know that it wasn't in their eyes, and they held their peace. And he took him and healed him and let him go. And answered them, saying, Which of you shall have an ass or an ox fallen into a pit and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? Here we see again Jesus' compassion to heal. Yes. Does it matter if it's a Sabbath day? Does it matter in his eyes? He's going to do what he was put here to do. And they could not answer him again unto these things. Notice Jesus' um, rebuke here, righteous rebuke. Um, there's a, uh, a scripture that says, A soft answer turneth away wrath. He answers them wisely. Yes. 7. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he marked how they chose of the chief rooms, saying unto them, Bidden is like called or invited, right. or like to stay with, who thou, when thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou hast bidden of thee. So he's, he's giving us instructions here. And he that bade thee, and him come and say to thee, Give this man place, and thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room. And when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. We have to be humble is what it's showing us. Yes. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased. Abased is to lower or depressed. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Right. Then shall he also to him that bade him, when thou makest a dinner or supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, nor thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and recompense be made thee. So just because something someone does something good for you, doesn't mean you necessarily have to do something good for them. You can do something good for somebody else. Right. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee. For thou shalt recompense at the resurrection of the just. 15. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto them, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then saith he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant, at supper time, to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they, all with one consent, began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and shewed his lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed, and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in to my house may be filled. So people are going to reject the message of Christ, but our job is to keep preaching, right. keep helping them. His room is never going to be filled until he comes back. Right. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father or his mother, and this doesn't mean like a, a hate how we think of it, the hate here is more like a, a, a following someone's desires or direction. If any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, now listen up, a disciple is a student. This next verse shows us what a, a true Christian is, not like today's Christian. Right. Verse number 27. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Right. And notice it says, come after him. Yeah. He's always going to be there for us, but we still have to seek him. Very we nice. have to go after him and find him. That's He's right. there, but we have to put in effort. For which of you... Intending to build a tower, sit is not down first and counted the cost whether ye have sufficient to finish it. Lest well, happily, after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, 
all that behold is begin to mock him. This happens today all the time. You see houses half built. Yep. People can't finish him. The That's owners right. of that house, they drive by and it just mocks and that. Yep. Oh, if I only could have finished that and made right. that money, or if I only could have finished that and lived there. Saying this, man began to build and was unable to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, sits not down first and consulting whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth condition of peace. Uh. Let's go back up to verse 27 for a minute. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Right. So this shows just what a true Christian is. A true Christian is, is not just a saved person. It's someone that follows after Christ and is a student of Christ. Amen. Um, if we... Turn over to Acts eleven twenty six. I'm going to read from nineteen to twenty six. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but only the Jews only. Yeah. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. The tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came, he had seen the grace of God, was glad, and exhorted them all, that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. Yeah. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Yeah. So... Notice, a Christian is not just someone who believed. A Christian here is the disciples who who pretty much gave everything they had up yes, for the church and to, to teach the message of Jesus Christ. It's a church-going person and a servant of the Lord, according to this verse. And let's go over to Acts 28. Acts 26, 28. I'm going to read from 24. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. Amen. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom I also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. So he's talking about King Agrippa, that he, he had knowledge of what had happened to Jesus. He, he says in the next verse, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. So Paul believes that King Agrippa believed the prophets, That's right. believed in God. But that doesn't mean just because he's a believer that he's a Christian. Because in 28 it says, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian. Right. It almost doesn't count. We know that. Mm. And, uh, so not just a believer of God is a Christian is what I'm getting at. Right. A Christian is someone who is willing to give up all they have, not focus on what their mother wants for them, what your daughter wants for you, what you want for your daughter, what your husband wants for you, but rather what Jesus wants yes. for you. Amen. And to follow after him. Amen. Now let's go back to Luke 14. Thirty-two. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desires conditions of peace. Thirty-three. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. My, my. 
Salt is good, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherein shall it be seasoned? We need to get on fire and Amen. stay on fire for yes. the Lord. We need to not lose our savor, because when we do, it's good for nothing. We need to ask ourselves, what good am I for God? Oh my. Amen. What good am I for God? 35. It is neither fit for the land nor yet for the dunghill. It's good for nothing. Right. But when, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Let's go over to uh, Matthew 5.13 real quick. We're talking about the salt. Matthew 5 and 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. My, my. Let's go over to Mark. 950. 950. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost its saltness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourself and have peace one with another. Amen. Amen. And in, in the Bible, salt was commended to be with every sacrifice according to Leviticus 2.13. According to Numbers 18.19, a symbol of a binding covenant. We Christians are the salt of the earth. We're, what does salt do? It makes you thirsty. We need yes. to make people thirsty for Amen. the word of God. We need to make people Good thirsty after Jesus. Amen. Good stuff, Rachel. So to be a true Christian is to, I don't mean hate, but the Bible says hate, so I don't mean hate like you may think, but if any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother and wife and children and brethren and sister, yea, in his own life, hate your own life, he cannot be my disciple. So uh, I just challenge everyone to, to try and be a disciple of Jesus, to seek him and do his will rather than ourselves. And we need to stay on fire, not lose our savor. Otherwise, we'll be good for nothing. So we need to stay in His Word, stay learning, stay teaching, and ask Him what His will is for our lives and seek it. Amen. And let's close in prayer. Father, we thank You for all things that You do. Thank You for Your precious Word. Thank You that we're able to gather together and worship You and praise You. I pray that You'd help us to yes. bring You glory in all that we do. Speak to us through your precious word every time we open it. Reveal things to us. Allow us to have understanding. I pray that you would be with the preacher as he preaches. I pray that you would be with us as we, we, we listen and understand. I pray that you would speak to our hearts. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Trey's got a question. Yes.